Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. It is truly wonderful to see so many of you here to celebrate the installation of Thomas A. Horan as the H. Jess and Donna Colton Sinecol Dean of the School of Business. Before I begin, I'd like to recognize a few special guests gathered with us. First, the person on whose shoulders we all stand, President Emeritus Jim Appleton, from whom you'll hear shortly. <laughs> Next, our trustees, without whom we would not be a perpetual institution. And I'll ask them to stand and remain standing, and then you can give them thunderous applause at the end. First, Brad Adams. Then Larry Burgess and his wife, Shar, who is Vice President for External Affairs and Dean Emerita. Becky Garnett and her husband, Bill. Debbie Heap. Rich and Jenny Hunsaker. Terry Kupfer. Pat Morris and his wife, Sally. Chuck Wilkie. Stan Weiser and his wife, Ellen. And trustee, Luann Bankson, who is our Alumni Board President. Please give them a round of applause. Third, I welcome family, Tom's wife, Rudy Abrashkin, and daughter, Kylie Horan. And last, but never least, my partner in all things Redlands, my wife, Nancy Kunsel. <laughs> Let me begin by claiming this core fact of university life. Attracting and keeping faculty of the highest caliber is critical to increasing the prestige and maintaining the strength of the University of Redlands. One of the best ways we meet that obligation is through the establishment of endowed professorships and named chairs. Endowments to support higher education stretch back as far as the Greek philosopher Plato, who granted land to maintain the academy at Athens. Here in 1914, the Will and Effie Crawford Chair to promote ethical and biblical studies was the first endowed position established at Redlands and is still a vital faculty position today. Since that time, our generous donors have created 21 endowed faculty positions and five endowed lecture funds. Four of these positions have been established by Rich and Jenny Hunsaker alone. Undeniably, this university's most visionary philanthropists. The endowed chair we gather to celebrate today, however, is extra special. The H. Jess and Donna Colton Cynical Dean's Chair in Business is a gift forged in a friendship that spans more than a half century, made possible through the generous giving of Rich and Jenny from the class of 1952, the Cynical Chair honors a relationship that began during their undergraduate days and flourished throughout their lifetimes. Rich, Jenny, and Donna Senecal are here with us today. So will you three please stand and be recognized by our crowd. Your friendship and that of Jess, who we wish were here today, have made a profound difference for our students as well as our faculty. Thank you so much. Now, without stealing Tom's or Kathy Ogren's remarks, let me just frame the process and values that led to this moment today. The concept for these installations of academic leaders is my desire to create a platform of ideas. Universities are marketplaces of ideas, and our deans are strong academic leaders who, with faculty, create that marketplace. In our installation ceremonies, I hope for deans and provosts to craft 
identities for the university by shining a spotlight on each school. If I recall back to my own academic installation previously as a provost, I was told over the subsequent years that some of my words on that symbolic occasion lived on to impact some of my colleagues' ideas about leadership and character for many years. And of course, more than anything else today, I hope to introduce to you the personality of a new emerging presence at U of R. So what are the traits of our newest friend and colleague, Tom Horan? And he's saying to himself right now, oh God. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Let me award three adjectives to you, Tom, that will now be yours to own and keep forever. First, some people have called him the enterprising dean, and his dynamism should never be underestimated. I remember being advised by one of his recommenders in our search process that the only problem I would ever have with Tom is keeping up with him. Like I was in high school, he's a sprinter. Today, we can all encourage him to realize that his deanship with us is neither sprint nor marathon, but more like a steeplechase. Second, I think of him as jazzy and snazzy. <laughs> With his fashionably long rock star hair <laughs> and his fashion forward pocket square, he stands out in a crowd. Now I happen to have in my hands a new pocket square in maroon and gray. You don't have to wear it now. <laughs> but now for the third adjective. I offer up something never before heard on an academic stage here. He's full of it. <laughs> By that, I mean he is full of ideas and energized. My hope is that he keeps being full. In preparing for this special occasion, I recalled the opening phrases of the position profile provided to applicants during that search process last year for a nationally renowned dean began back in January 2017. It stated simply, the University of Redlands is seeking someone who will, quote, advance a vision for coordination and collaboration among the business education units that capitalizes on the strengths of each and articulates a comprehensive approach to business studies at the University of Redlands. The dean will be a visionary, entrepreneurial leader who sees opportunities for innovation and brings the strategic and operational skills to lead implementation and empower stakeholders to fully realize the opportunities for collaboration and growth in this region." End quote. And if that wasn't a tall enough order, we also sought a leader who would, quote, expand relationships with local businesses and nonprofit organizations that enhance recruitment and create collaborations to advance the university's mission. In just over half a year, Tom has worked with faculty and staff to articulate the future direction of the school and has worked collaboratively to make decisions about the present and the future with coherence and consistency. He brings his wealth of valuable experience and excellent administrative skills to the university, along with an entrepreneurial style that has enabled him to emerge as a memorable leader. With these comments, I can now turn to the pleasure of introducing to you Provost Kathy Ogren. Kathy was named Provost of the University of Redlands in June of 2015. 
As the university's chief academic officer, she works directly with the deans of the School of Business, the College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Education, and the School of Continuing Studies, as well as with several administrative areas, including the Armacost Library, Information Technology Services, Institutional Research, Assessment, and the Center for Spatial Studies. Now, I've always told people that pedigrees don't matter so much to me in finding true leaders. Rather, character and vision do. Nevertheless, I'll mention Kathy, Kathy's pedigree in part. Prior to her, her appointment as provost, Kathy served as dean and associate provost in the College of Arts and Sciences for three years. She has enjoyed a multifaceted career here at Redlands, teaching over 40 courses in the Department of History, in Women, Gender, and Sexuality Studies, and in the Johnston Center. Kathy directed the Johnston Center for eight years, served as the chair of the faculty assembly, and served as your namesake, Jenny, as the Virginia Hunsaker Chair in Teaching. She's covered all the positions the very best of scholars might as recipient of an Outstanding Research Award, the Outstanding Teaching Award, and the Armacost Award for Faculty Service from the Alumni Association. Kathy received her baccalaureate degree in American Studies and Humanities from Scripps College in 1977. She holds a PhD in History from the Johns Hopkins University. Now that's a pedigree. <laughs> but I won't hold that against you, Kathy. I now turn the podium to our Chief Academic Officer, Kathy Ogren. We may have a rare moment in my work with President Kunsel. I don't think he has stolen any of my thunder, which is almost never the case. So um, that's good. You know, it's my honor to celebrate the investiture of Dr. Tom Horan today as the H. Jess and Donna Colton Senecal Chair of the School of Business. I'd like to welcome all of our guests and recognize our colleagues who processed in to begin the ceremony. For those of you who don't know, they are the newly inducted members of the School of Business Whitehead Leadership Society, cohort CEOs from each of our regional campuses, and members of the faculty, full-time faculty, that is, of the School of Business. So I'd like to give them a round of applause for their leadership also. I extend a special welcome to Rudy and Kylie. I'm so glad you're here with us on this auspicious occasion. Why is it auspicious? Because we are, as a university, on the cusp of a new era for our School of Business. In your investiture programs, you will see that Tom has identified the purpose of a business school of business education. He writes about the why of the business school. So I'm going to speak now about the why of Tom Horan. First of all, first why, preparation and experience. Tom's preparation for Redlands is first rate. His education is an impressive blend of liberal arts learning and sensibilities, advanced professional knowledge, and innovative applications of research. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa from the University of Vermont with a BA in psychology, and then moved west to obtain a master's in public policy at the Claremont Graduate School and a PhD also from Claremont in organizational psychology and technology. This is not the educational journey of a narrowly focused or insular scholar. It is the trajectory of a forward-looking, integrative, and innovative thinker. And when we consider Tom's teaching and scholarship, a doer. For Tom, management as a liberal arts means having a broad, multidisciplinary view of the world, and yet, being able to craft specific improvements within it. His work, succinctly captured in 130 articles, testifies to that. 
I don't have that pedigree, by the way, or either, but that's, it's a quite um, impressive and for us a very um, exciting background that Tom brings. His research in healthcare has led to innovations in technology for aiding underserved populations. His work in transportation supply chain has informed new partnerships between the freight industry and government agencies. For many of his analyses, GIS is Tom's tool of choice, and he is helping create the next generation of a new spatial business way of thinking. This approach to business education and research has led him to serve in numerous advisory roles, both in the United States and abroad, such as his long-standing cooperation with the University of Minnesota and his recent work in advising Hong Kong University on their creation of a new master's in management as a art. Excuse me. The why too. Tom's vision is simultaneously expansive and integrative. That fits not only Tom, but our history as well our history and our present. For over a century, we have empowered students to embark on successful leadership pathways for careers, professions, individual intellectual and social development, and community engagement. We set a high standard for our graduates that they be educated in heart and in mind. Consequently, Redlands graduates will bring advanced knowledge and skills to their individual and community endeavors and demonstrate a reflective understanding of their world. Thanks to Tom's visionary leadership and directive energy that excites change, we are focusing our mission on business leadership skills for the 21st century. Why number three? Tom embraced and enhanced who we are from the very start and challenged us to be better. Business and economics have been central to the university's curriculum and mission since 1920 when we first offered a concentration or a degree in business administration within the sociology and economics department at that time in the College of Arts and Sciences. As early as 1973, we offered a BA degree for special transfer students who are 25 years or older and seeking part-time education while employed. Thus became the mission, in fact, of Whitehead College, founded in 1976. Our current School of Business was established in 2001, and just last fall, we added our first online MBA program. Last year, of the 1,298 students of the university who graduated with a bachelor's and master's degree in economics or business, 64% were from the School of Business. And as an aside, I do want some of you at least to recall that the Johnston College, whose old building we are sitting in was named by an IBM executive from Scotland who thought he was founding a business college. <laughs> you know, history happens. Things don't always go as planned, but Debbie will appreciate that. Tom has invigorated this long-standing tradition at Redlands by meeting the faculty, the students, and staff across our regional campuses, seeking out alumni and friends of the School of Business. He initiated new conversations and partnerships, facilitated relationships from Hong Kong to San Diego. He wasted no time in launching strategic planning and sharing his ideas for our future. He partnered with his fellow deans to accelerate completion of our strategic planning objectives. Every week, Tom sends me a new idea, contact, or possibility that can then be tested with our leadership team. This is not a scattershot practice, this is the well-honed expertise of a person building networks for a greater purpose. The fourth and the last why of Tom Horan. He helps build teams with ease. His fellow Dean Kendrick Brown from the College of Arts and Sciences cannot join us today. Kendrick is on his way to Salzburg where we, we I think most of you know, have a campus and is uh, checking up with that program. But he shared instead for me to share with you a thank you to Tom. He wrote, I appreciate Tom's clarity of vision about the role that business education has at the University of Redlands. Over numerous conversations, I have come to respect Tom's entrepreneurial spirit, keen insights into leadership, and his connections with business in the larger community. I appreciate his use of humor to keep conversations positive and collegial. To me, he epitomizes the best of what a dean of the School of Business should be. He is focused on making vibrant connections with students 
at all stages of their relationship with the university, engaging allies who can help the university achieve a compelling vision, and always thinking of how the university can be a better place for faculty, students, and alumni who have faith in the promises that we make as an institution. I think that Kendrick's tribute to Tom speaks for most of, uh, some of them are here, but uh, certainly everyone in my team, many of whom are in the room, we all share those uh, great initial experiences with Tom, and I'm deeply grateful to him for joining our ensemble. In conclusion, I want to echo something Ralph spoke about, which is the purpose of these events. When we pause to reflect at times like this, we come to a greater understanding of our generative purpose and promise, our collective why. In recent years, as President Kunzel's vision of a university on the move has taken shape, we have invested a dean of education and installed a dean of the college and a provost. At each of these ceremonial moments in our history, we have lauded leadership abilities that galvanize faculty, students, and staff to make positive change at Redlands and to carry forth the heart and mind education for new generations. At those ceremonies, I have characterized the qualities of effective leadership as midwifery, as a blue sensibility that productively manages change at the crossroads, and as professional experience honed over exceptional lifelong learning journeys. Now what is Tom bringing? Tom is bringing a carpe diem sensibility that enhances these qualities and will keep us energetically focused on an ever better future for the university. It's my pleasure now digitally, screen can come down, to introduce one of Tom's greatest fans, Jack Dangerman. Jack is a fellow visionary, a networker extraordinaire, and the CEO of our neighboring global leader in geographic information systems, Esri. And some of us are going to leave the stage, just in case they didn't get the message. Hi, Tom. It's my great pleasure to join everybody else in welcoming you to the University of Redlands and also congratulating you on this position of being appointed as Dean of the Business School. This is so exciting to me because for those of you who don't know Tom's career, he has a very distinguished career in Claremont uh, in both quantitative methods and systems analysis, but also is credited in bringing spatial into the Claremont University system there. And he's done this with project-based focus. He worked carefully with students to nurture them to learn by doing, a kind of wonderful phrase that, that I enjoy. Uh, having his students experience the beauty of applying quantitative and GIS methods to better, better do their work. He also has this interesting skill of getting people excited. And for me, it's always a pleasure to be around him because I learn something from him at all times. He's always got new news for me, and not just the news, he also has this imaginative way of getting me excited about the news and seeing the future. And, and the effect that he will have on students will be enormous. Tom is also entrepreneurial. He doesn't sit still. He's always about creating expansion and vision. He's going to bring to our university here great vision about creating the future. Now, the reality is Esri has, has um, through originally with Dr. Appleton, started a program of teaching our, our professionals on the Redlands campus how to better manage through the business school. We have now graduated over 300 of our uh, staff through the program, uh, the extension program here at the university. And so I'm excited to know what Tom is going to bring into that, knowing so much about spatial and geography. We're going to step it up a bit. This year we've uh, granted some funding to Tom to build a collaboration between our business commercial part of GIS, our vertical market of, of uh, or vertical industry of GIS and business, uh, and the university. And we don't know exactly what's going to come out of this, but knowing Tom, I know it's going to be really good. Thank you, Tom, for coming. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for supporting Tom in this way and launching him into this new chapter. I'll be, I'll be looking, Tom, to see how we can do even better things and greater things together. Thank you.
And uh, now with that introduction, it's my pleasure to welcome Tom to the podium. Thank you, thank you. Well, I wasn't intimidated until all those speeches. <laughs> now I feel like I ought to just, you know, say thank you and go on to the reception, because I don't know if I can top that. Uh, uh, well, first, uh, Ralph and Kathy, uh, thank you for your kind interjuc introductions. Uh, snazzy and jazzy, I'll take that one. I, I thought worse were coming down the pipe when Ralph started, so I'm a <laughs> sigh of relief. Uh, and it's a delight to be working uh, with both of them. Uh, Ralph, on several occasions, has talked about his role in assembling a dream team, people with vision and character, and it's really just been my delight to join that dream team, uh, uh, which includes Kathy and Ralph leading it, and the cabinet members, and so forth. It really is uh, really quite, it's quite a team. I'm also, uh, Jack Dangerman's been a hero of mine for a long time, so, uh, uh, I joked when I watched that video, I did not make my kids watch it four times. <laughs> okay, I did. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm just grateful for his, for his uh, warm introduction uh, by video. Uh, I want to begin my talk by having something, a oh, glass of water. <laughs> uh, I want to begin my talk by first expressing my gratitude. And this gratitude first starts with you. Thank all of you for coming out here on this uh, brisk day uh, to, to uh, celebrate uh, the chair, uh, as well as really to celebrate uh, the, the, school of, the School of Business. It's, uh, this is really both kinds of celebrations are going on. Uh, in addition to my old friends and colleagues who are here, uh, some from uh, Claremont and elsewhere, I particularly want to thank the students, alumni, faculty, and staff who make the school work each and every day many of whom have done so for decades. I'm joining a dedicated school, a dedicated staff, a dedicated uh, faculty. And as I mentioned at the outset, I'd also like to thank my fellow cabinet members, deans, vice presidents, uh, and so forth for allowing me uh, to feel at home here at Redlands. And that feeling at home has allowed me to feel very comfortable and confident uh, to hit, hit the ground running, which is my, my preference. Uh, and so uh, we have hit the ground running. I'm going to try and in, in situ change it into a steeplechase <laughs> thing. I don't know if I can get there, you know. Uh, maybe later in the speech I'll figure it out. But, uh, uh, but we have hit the steeples running. <laughs> over, no, went over the steeples uh, nicely. Uh, anyways, uh, we have, in the last several months, made some very important strides. Uh, first and foremost, we obtained our long sought accreditation from ACBSP. This 10 year accreditation of our business school validates the quality of our programs, and that in particular is why we're, we're proud of this uh, accreditation. When I was asked about the accreditation at my very first Board of Trustees retreat, I should have said something very eloquent, but I just went, they said, So what do you think? And I went, Wahoo! <laughs> and so, uh, so I, I think I would have used like extraordinary or something, <laughs> but it was, and it is a great moment. And at that time, and once again uh, today, I'd like to thank our accreditation team who spent four years on it, in particular Keith Roberts for his dedication to bringing it to fruition. In, the, in these first few months, we've also launched new corporate partnerships, such as with United Technologies Corporation, uh, which has 100,000 employees. We've entered into a new collaboration with ESRI on spatial business. You heard that alluded to. I think uh, the bar set pretty high. He expects even bigger things. <laughs> We're Cindy <laughs> from ESRI, okay. Uh, and so, uh, and as he noted, uh, we will be uh, pursuing that with great earnest. We've also created new pathways with feeder colleges uh, and, and so forth. It really has been a pretty intense start, uh, but I don't know if any of you remember the movie Scent of the Woman at the end, uh, Al Pacino, uh, you know, we're just getting warmed up, right? Uh, we are, to really make a big impact on the school as we move forward. Now, as Kathy alluded to, our actions have not been scattershot actions. Uh, we have a plan. 
and it's a good one. Uh, in the spirit of the Olympics, I'd like to call it the luge strategic plan because we went at it like a luge, which, as you know, usually ends really well and occasionally really poorly. But uh, I think we've ended really well. Uh, and during this process, we've talked with everybody, uh, students, faculty, alumni, uh, and so forth. I have, we all have, I have in a database, I have 60, 661 pieces of advice. <laughs> and so, and we are churning through it. And, uh, and we're learning a lot uh, uh, from, that, from that process. Uh, importantly, what has come out of this effort is a renewed clarity about our mission. And what is clear is that we are here to empower students to succeed in their professional lives and careers. And empower is a key word. Uh, for me, one of the most uh, valuable activities I've had at, 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 since joining is to meet with alumni, meet with students, and hear about their stories, about how they came to the School of Business, how they, at a point in life where they needed to finish that undergraduate degree, or needed to finish a graduate degree in order to take the next step in their uh, career and in their professional development. And they stuck it out. Uh, our classes are at night. Most of our students are working or managing a family. And they stuck it out one or two nights a week for years, and one year, two years, sometimes more, in order to get the job done. No entitlement card, hard work. And that getting the job done has allowed them to get to move in a new direction, achieve a coveted advancement, or realize a personal goal. This, this hard-earned plight is very inspirational to me, and that's what I remark upon in my written comments. Going out and hearing people working really hard to, to get ahead and get ahead uh, they have. And it's what motivates me, and I think motivates the faculty, uh, to keep it on every day. Now, words are one thing, but I thought, since we're here, we ought to take a look at what this is. So I'd like to ask anyone from the School of Business who is an alum or who is a student to please stand up so we can see what we're talking about here, right? So look at that, yes! Congratulations to you. That's why we're here. Uh, that's what motivates us, to bring everybody you saw, uh, give them an opportunity to succeed in the classroom, to succeed in their career, and to succeed uh, personally. So looking ahead, what's our vision for the school? We are building on 40 years of tradition as a business education enterprise. But we must move forward in these changing times. So the cornerstone of our plan is about 21st century business skills. What is needed in the 21st century to succeed? Now, it's a little secret. Some of those were important in the 20th century as well. But uh, we're focused on the 21st century here. And so these skills include the ability to be integrative, collaborative, analytical, entrepreneurial, persuasive, ethical, global, environmental, and yes, spatial. These 21st century skills are what Eric Schmidt, uh, chairman of uh, Google, has called the smart creatives, right? That drive business through innovation, the ability to articulate, the ability to take data but see the bigger picture. That's what employers want, and that's what we're keen uh, to continue to produce and produce in, in even bigger ways. Now, of course, we live in challenging times. Uh, for example, recently there's been heightened interest about automation and artificial intelligence. It's going to take us all over, right? And uh, including the jobs that could be eliminated due to these advances, including uh, some analyses by our very own business faculty uh, on us about how this might be the case. So what are we to do? Uh, I recently attended a forum uh, that's, that was about the McKinsey Report on what jobs artificial intelligence and automation would take away. But the flip side of the report was what jobs would remain and what jobs would be in demand. And I was heartened to see on their chart that the skills associated with jobs that would remain are the kinds of skills we're teaching. Analytical, uh, ability to integrate, manage people, all those things are on the to stay and grow side of the ledger and that's exactly where we want our students to be. And in that vein, as a school, we see ourselves as 
being about the skilled workforce preparation uh, for the Inland Valley, uh, for Southern California, and beyond. And when you think about it, we've been doing it for 40 years. We've already delivered 30,000 alumni into Southern California. So we are you know, in the business of bringing skilled, or having our students have those skills to succeed. Just as a quick data point, when I looked at the surveys of students who came to the school and, and, and graduated, it was really impressive. Uh, highly diverse, uh, you know, 33% Hispanic, 18% African American, 12% uh, uh, veteran, and so on and so forth. But interestingly, in the MBA, 90% were working at the time, 50% got promoted during their time in the MBA, and 86% believed they would get promoted or have a new job within three years, and 25% made over $100,000 when they graduated. I mean, that is quite a profile of hard-earned success, and that's what we want to continue uh, to do. So as we move forward, we have this plan to help guide that success. The plan is about 100 pages long. I brought it with me, and I'm going to read. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. Uh, uh, yeah, like, and he, he might. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, it has five strategies and 23 action plans, and my challenge now is to make it sound really interesting, uh, you know, late in the afternoon. So what I, I will just treetop it for you to give you kind of a sense of where we're headed. Our first strategy, as you can tell, perhaps, is to empower students to succeed through an integrated curriculum around these 21st century skills and a 360 commitment to the overall student success in and outside the classroom. Uh, that's the way of the world now, and if we want to be a quality institution, that's the way we have to go. Our second strategy is to enhance our academic programs. We need to constantly update, reinvent, reinvigorate, and add, and so forth. Spatial business is one area that we're moving in. A new master's in organizational leadership is another. We're actively exploring healthcare management uh, in various ways. Uh, working with Dan Otter, who's right here in the School of Continuing Studies, offering select certificates and online programs, and so forth. Constantly improving our academic, uh, our academic mission. I saw a study recently about MBA programs, and it still is the case that it's the reputation of the school and the quality of the curriculum, in the end, are the main drivers. Cost, convenience, and so forth are kind of, you know, kind of uh, entry conditions, but they're not, you know, the aspirational conditions, and so that's what we have to hit as well. Now, the third strategy is to continue to grow these partnerships. Uh, ESRI, United Technologies, these are, these are key to our growth. And we have a slate of partnerships that we'll be announcing over the next months and, 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 and year or so that will really bolster our relationship with uh, businesses. You know, a lot, have been, a lot has been said about the student loan crisis, right? Well, one solution to the student loan crisis is the employer participating in uh, education solution. And we are working with those employers that are stepping up uh, to the bat. We're also working with feeder colleges and community colleges to provide opportunities throughout, throughout Southern California. Our fourth strategy is to enhance our competitive infrastructure. This is where uh, I put in and a great new building. Oh, no, uh, this, and, uh, <laughs> in the meantime, uh, we'd like to get some new computers in the classroom and, uh, and connect our regional campuses, and that's uh, key for us in, in, in that area. Then finally, uh, it's the area, of, it's the strategy to continually innovate for uh, financial and, and uh, you know, kind of sustainable success. I put this one in just for our chief financial officer. <laughs> and so, want you to know, Corey, we're going to continually innovate to achieve financial uh, success in a variety of ways through use of online, uh, you know, outsourcing to online kind of assistance and that, and that kind of thing. So, so these are our five strategies. As uh, Ralph, when he visited us, uh, pointed out, and, and we're committed to, it's both a quality strategy and a growth strategy. And those two are really intertwined. We, to have growth without quality is not worth it, right? Uh, to have quality and not grow, well, that's a problem, right? And so they interrelate, and that's, that's really the thrust of, of our plan. Now, uh, we are not an island unto ourselves. Uh, uh, we are seven islands, no, <laughs> go together. this one, six campuses, uh, but we are located within a university and within a liberal arts university. 
And this foundation is very important to us. It informs how we think about business education in various ways, and you heard Kathy allude to it. I see, and I believe we see, management as a liberal art, and that it requires both a broad understanding of the world, economic, demographic, you know, uh, sociological, financial, right? but not just a broad understanding, but the ability to translate that understanding into effective action, right? That's where the proof is in the pudding. You can know a lot of things, but then what do you do with it? You know, what kind of decision do you make? What kind of program do you launch? That combination of broad and execute is at the heart of management as, as, as a liberal art. And that's really what we're focused on as being a part of a liberal arts uh, university. So, uh, since, uh, since we've been at it for seven months, I would say that we've uh, moved briskly through our first steeplechase jumps, uh, and we've got five steeplechase jumps in our strategic plan to get through. Uh, but it really is, in part, a vision at this point. And over the next several weeks and months and, and years, uh, we will be working with you to invite you to, to give us advice to help us craft, react, and execute uh, these ideas uh, through all kinds of ways, through volunteering, uh, through providing assistance, such as Jack and Laura Dangerman has, uh, through helping through endowed chairs, such as the one I have, which is just so critical uh, to, to our success. So we're excited about it, and we're, we're, we're going already. Uh, to sum up, uh, our school has and will always be focused on making a difference making a difference in the lives of our students, making a difference in, in the world. We believe that the purpose of organizations, including uh, not, nonprofit organizations, public organizations, governmental organizations, is to make a difference in the world in some way. Whether that's a better service, or more useful product, an impactful nonprofit, or a well-run well agency. That's our calling here at the School of Business, is to make organizations work better for society and to train students and educate students to lead those organizations day in and day out over the next decades. So let me close, uh, and, and in so closing, I'd like to express my appreciation to the individuals most central to my occupying the uh, H. Jess and Donna Senegal Dean's chair. First, uh, thank you, uh, Rich and Jenny Hunsaker, thank you for your generous financial support that allowed this chair to be established. Thank you, Donna Seneca, uh, for your leadership that you and your late husband provided to the university, which in many ways led to the chair being named in your honor and your husband's, husband's honor. It's an honor for me to hold the chair and to be associated with these four leaders of the university. In that spirit, let me take a sip. There was a theme in that Jesse Seneca, Donna Seneca, Jeannie Hunsinker, Rich Hunsinker. I think I better thank my wife. <laughs> and, uh, and so if I may add one person to the list, it would be for me to thank my wife, Ruti, for her unwavering support over 30 years. She's always set a very high bar for me. I fail some of them, like any culinary talent, but, uh, but on the important one, it was not to be rich, not to be at the top of the heap, but rather to be a mensch. That is, a person of character, conviction, and contribution. I can't say enough how much her devotion has empowered me to be the best person for my family, for my colleagues, students, university, and the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. And now it's my pleasure to invite our President Emeritus, Professor, uh, sorry, Dr. Jim Appleton, up to the podium. Well, you are Professor. Thank you. Tom, I know of Ralph's excitement of your being here. And I uh, will enjoy applauding 
the, the progress that I see and that the cabinet will bring in these days ahead for our school to build business. I remember a 2004 conversation with Rich Hunsaker as he made clear that he wanted the next gift that Ginny and he would give to go to endowment and even more specifically to another faculty chair. But we were already enjoying the Virginia Hunsaker Chair of Distinguished Teaching and the Hunsaker Chair of Management. And you all know very well that attention is not something that Rich and Ginny ever have sought. Well, we had to push them hard to have those chairs named for them and certainly pushed even harder to have the Hunsaker Center named in their honor. So what to do? Well, maybe Rich, you could name the chair for others who are important to you and Ginny. Um, it would certainly honor them, and uh, you and Jenny might enjoy that. Hmm, uh, maybe Jess and Donna. Wow, wouldn't that be terrific? And so it was. The four of them you already know were classmates, longtime friends, and Jeff served as Rich's confidant and attorney for many years. If you had the perch that I had over many years watching them as fellow trustees at the U of R, you'd know that Rich and Jess were soulmates. Now the important contributions made by Jeff, Jess and Donna to their own mater will forever be celebrated, not only by their own scholarship gifts, but with the School of Business Dean's position being named in their honor. You know, it would be Ginny who could tell stories going back to school days about you, Donna. So I hope you'll allow me and maybe we can get some of those at the reception, maybe that would be fun. But I hope you would allow me to tell a few tales about Jess. The all business side of Jess was shown to me very quickly when as committee chair he called me to indicate that the trustees were ready to ask me to be president of the University of Redlands, only to hear from me that I had some second thoughts. Yep, Jess called Rich. It was not more than an hour after that call when Rich called me as board chair to invite Carol and me to the Center Club for dinner that very evening. I learned early two things about the strong relationship between the two of them and the four of them and that Jess wasted no time when it was time for business. But there also was a very mischievous side to Jess, mischievous. He could be serious just so long. He and Rich would always sit side by side at meetings, and I would from time to time see that very small grin and slight rolling of the eyes lean towards Rich during the meeting as if to say, when are these guys going to stop talking and get to the decision? Sometimes, right Rich, it's true, Sometimes their, when their off-agenda conversations overtook the real generation, they seemed more like fraternity boys at a rush party. Not devious, just mischievous. For those of us who knew Jess well, we can just about imagine him as the schoolboy who waited until the teacher left the room to then very carefully place just the end of the pigtail in, of the girl sitting in front of him into the inkwell. When speaking at the opening of the Stauffer Science Center in 2000, Jess held up what must have been the oldest piece of science equipment that had been stored in the old Hornby Hall attic. None of us recognized it. And he weaved a tale about what he had just invented for the use with undergraduate biology students for the new labs. And if he were today, here today, and don't we wish it, when asked to speak, he would be slightly embarrassed, a bit self-deprecating, and I can imagine him weaving a tale about the importance of our business school. He might start by saying, business, now what is business? In a business school? What would it do? And after a winding, intentionally illogical set of propositions, he might shift to a description not about business, but about monkey business. 
and the shenanigans associated with monkey business. And he might conclude by saying, you see, anything connected with our Seneca names would mean someone has been monkeying around with reality. And we'd follow that and then, so as not to be misled, and with slight embarrassment, and deflecting the attention to others, and embedded would be a statement of his hope for and competence in the future success of this university. And if he had heard what Tom said today, he would have quietly whispered to Rich, I can just hear it, we've sure got the right guy now. And, uh, it would come out without hesitation. Well, Jess was also serious, and I'll turn to that again. Jeff, Jess was a brilliant lawyer, managing partner for many years, <coughs> very involved in community activities, he and Donna. In any board meeting, when we turned to him, after listening carefully, he again would reluctant, be reluctant, but he'd offer a solution that was logical, made sense, and all was on course. More than once, I recall Rich saying to me, what do you think Jess will say before we made a decision? As an aside, the only real illogical thing about him was his love for USC football. But we, <laughs> we will excuse that at this point. When I'd call his Pasadena office to tell him I needed to come by, that I needed some advice, the response was immediate, and his recommendations always reflected wisdom and care for this university. When he'd squint a bit and shift his eyebrows, it was a signal that he didn't think I was quite right in making the decision that I had considered, and I'd have to reach for another option to get the satisfied smile that he'd show when he knew he had done good. In executive committee meetings of the board, eventually the gaze of all in the room would often go to Jess. We were just waiting for his sage advice. Advisor to a fault and friend to us all. Thank you, Donna, for your life among us. And we'll hear more from Ginny later. And I hope this shows my deepest admiration for both you and Jess, both a serious guy and a lot of fun. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, I'd like to invite to the podium uh, first Dean Haran right here, and second Rich Hunsaker to come up and join us. You have to bat, no, up over here, the stairs over here. <laughs> Bad idea. And uh, finally, Provost Ogren. And so, Dean Thomas A. Haran, with this medallion, we as President and Provost formally install you as the H. Jess and Donna Colton Cynical Dean of the School of Business, and in doing so, affirm your place among the university's storied roster of exemplary scholars, teachers, mentors, and colleagues. If you'd like to say a few words, you're welcome to before I close the program and dismiss us. Well, thank you all again for coming. Uh, it's just been a delight for me to join the University of Redlands and today is really a highlight in my career to be able to think about uh, who I've worked with, what I've been able to do, and mostly to see the great team, the family here at the University of Redlands with the faculty, staff, students, alumni, trustees. It's very energizing and I'm very honored to be here. Thank you.
thank you all for being here. These are the religious moments in the history of the university. And I thank you for your warmth that you've transmitted up to the podium here to your new dean. And I would just say that we are so happy to have amongst us someone who is so enterprising, jazzy, <laughs> and full of ideas. And now, Tom, it's time to take that pocket square and your medallion and work the room. All right. <laughs>